In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an income and expenditure account in Excel. With this system, I'll be showing you how to create in this video today. You can use it to manage your personal account at home when it comes to managing your income and expenditure. With this, you can also use it to manage your petty cash book, that is if you are running a small business. This is just a system that will track your income and expenses. So with the headings I have here, you can easily label them as receipts or payments income and expenditure you can also call it deposits or withdrawals whichever way you want to call it the most important thing is having positive and negative figures so i'm going to go ahead and demonstrate with this template here and show you how it works before i show you how you can actually create a system like this for yourself so i have a template for a petty cash book where i have date description receipts or payments as well as balance on a particular date I'll assume I'm having a balance of $500 or whichever currency you are going to be using. The moment I enter $500, hit enter, you see that the balance will run through. Assuming on the second day, I have an incoming balance of $50. After entering it, I hit enter, the balance will run through, starting from the very row where I entered the $50, as you can see right here. So this is actually using the running balance system. So let's say I have another amount coming in as an income. I entered it right here. That is $10. Hit enter. And you see that the balance has run through. Let's assume on the fourth day, there's an expenditure, which is going to be payments in my case. And the amount I've spent is $20. After entering it, if I hit enter now, this $20 will be deducted from the $560 I have right here. And it will run through the rest of the balances. So I hit enter and you see that I now have 540 starting from here going down to the end. Awesome, right? So in this video, this is exactly what I'm going to show you how to create today for yourself or your small business. If this is what you want, then keep watching. So having opened a new sheet in Excel, the first thing I want to do is take notice of the number of columns I want to use for my design. In the first row, I'll just enter the title of the template I'm creating. In this case, I'm going to call it Personal Account Manager. I hit enter. In the second row on the first column, I'm going to go ahead and enter date. I go to the next column, that is column B, where I have cell B2. And this is going to be description. I can easily press the tab key on the keyboard or the right arrow key to move to the next cell. In cell C2, I'll enter income. Going to D2, I enter expenses or expenditure, whichever way you want to call it. And finally, E2, I'll enter balance. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight the first row from A1 up to E1. Then under alignment group, I click on merge and center in order to merge all the cells into one. What I can also do is hover on top right here. That is on the line in between column B and column C. I'll just go ahead and click on it. Then I'll drag to open so that the description will fit very well into its own cell. The next thing I want to do is format the cells under income, expenses, and balance to accept currency. Let me explain what I mean by that. If I click in here, then I go ahead and enter $50, hit enter, I'll only get 50 instead of 50.00 to appear as currency or to appear in money form. Even if I enter 50.00 and press enter, I'll still get the 50 instead of 50.00. So I want to format the cells to accept currency. So anytime I enter a whole number, it will appear as money. So to do that, I highlight from here up to balance. Then I go down to whichever row I want to end it. It doesn't really matter. You can always expand it and I'll show you how later on in the tutorial. So scrolling up, I just want to be on the top so that you see the values I already have there work in real time. After highlighting, the next thing I want to do is go over to the number group. Then I click on the small arrow right here. Then it will open up the former cells dialog box. At the moment, the number is set to general. That is why we have 50 and the sample without the 0 0.00 or without the decimal figures. In here, we have two options to use. You can either decide to use currency 
or accounting. Either way, they will give you the same results. But accounting is having a special thing which I'll be showing you in a moment. So if I choose currency, now under sample, you see that I have 50 Ghana cities. I've seen this currency because I've already set my currency symbol to Ghana cities. So if you want to change the currency, you just go ahead and drop down the arrow right here and choose the particular currency you want. I want to choose English United States, that is dollar sign. Then I go ahead and click on OK. And you see the value has changed. So I now have dollar sign attached to my figure right here. And we also see the point zero zero. So now if I enter any amount that is 20, hit enter, you see the currency sign right there. And the point zero zero will also be added. Perfect. Now, assuming I have a zero balance, if I enter zero, hit enter, you see that the amount will be zero dollar. But if you don't want to see the zero amount, instead you want to see something like dashes as I have right here. Let me show you how we can do that. Now I'll highlight the whole thing again up to whichever point I want. Scroll up. I click on the small arrow and the number group and this time around I'm going to go ahead and use accounting. Then I go ahead and click on OK. And you see that the zero figure here has not changed to dash sign. Now one other thing I want to show you is that assuming you don't want the currency sign to be attached to your values, how can we take it off? We go over to the arrow sign and the number group again. And the symbol, I drop down the arrow, scrolling up, I choose none. Then I go ahead and click on OK and the currency sign is gone. Now let's start calculating our running balance. So first of all, I want to take away the values I already have. Take note, we are going to be having the running balance under the balance column that is right here. So I click inside the first cell under balance. The next thing I want to do is tell Excel that I want to get an answer inside this particular cell. To do that, I go ahead and press the equal sign. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to subtract the expenses from the income. So it's going to be income minus expenses. To do that, I click on the very first cell under income. And you see that the name of the cell will appear inside my equation right here. Or inside my formula. In my case, it's C3. Then I hit the minus sign key on the keyboard. Then I go ahead and click on the first cell under expenses. And the name of the cell will also appear there, which is D3 in my case. So I have equal sign C3 minus D3. Then I go ahead and press the enter key on the keyboard. And because the balance is zero, that's why we are seeing the dash sign right here. Awesome. Now, if I enter, for instance, $500 here and hit enter, you see 500 under the balance. Simple because I've deducted the expenses, which is zero from the income which is $500. Now, assuming I have a new figure coming, which is for instance $20, if I hit enter, I'm not going to see any calculation going on. So now how can we get the balance to run through upon entering the next income we have? To do that, we will need a new formula. And the formula is going to be different from the first one we had right here. So I click in here. In order to get the total figure, of $500 and $20, we are going to add the second income we have right here, that is $20, to the existing balance of $500 we have right here. So in order to do that, first of all, we enter the equal sign. Then we go ahead and click on the first balance we have under balance, which is $500 in our case. So it's going to give us cell E3. That is what we have right here. Next, we go ahead and add this $20 to the $500. So we enter the plus sign. Then we go ahead and click on the second income figure we have entered, which is $20 in our case. And it will give us cell C4. Then we now subtract the expenses from it. So I enter the minus sign. Then I go ahead and click on the second cell and the expenses. Take note, it should be in the same row as the second income figure you have. So upon clicking, you see that I have D4. Now I hit enter key and the figure will come as we see it right here. Awesome. Next, assuming I have a new income figure, which is 
ten dollars i enter it then i hit enter in order to get the balance here we need to follow the same process we used in getting this figure and this time around we are not going to waste time repeating the same process instead what we need to do is just select that figure that is the last running balance then upon selecting it we hover on this small square right here and our mouse pointer will change to this dark cross just click on it hold down the mouse then you drag to whichever location you want or whichever row you want in this case i will just end it here then i release the mouse and you see that the balances will run through as you can see so scrolling up take note initially we are having 520 dollars as our balance upon entering 10 dollars it will be added to the 520 which will give us 530 dollars and also take notice that because we are using the running balance formula the figure will always run through it's not that you are going to add them together to have a total every single amount you have under each row will serve as your final balance depending upon where you have entered your income or expenses so now let's assume on the fourth day we have incurred an expenditure and that is going to come right here in this expenditure for instance is 60 dollars so i enter 60 so what this means is that we are now going to subtract 60 dollars from 530 so upon hitting enter we will now see our actual balance which is going to be i think 470 dollars so we hit enter and you see that the balance will run through perfect let me show you another thing in a particular day you can have an income as well as an expenditure so everything is going to be in one line for instance we have an income of hundred dollars on the same day we have an expenditure of fifty dollars so first of all we enter the hundred then we go to expenses the moment we click on the expenses the hundred dollars here will be added to the 470 right here let's see how let's see that in action i click and you see that we now have 570 dollars then I enter the $50 expenses we have incurred. Upon hitting enter, we'll get $520 as we can see on the screen right there. It should be noted that for each and every one of these entries we have here, that is under income and expenses, you can have their corresponding days as well as their description right here beside each one of them. So now let's assume you have exhausted the number of rows you have. For instance you've gotten to the end meanwhile you still have some balances going on so let's say i have maybe 40 here then i still have more balances going on if i enter for instance 50 the calculation is not going to run through if i go and enter some expenditure maybe 10 i will not see any calculation so for you to make the calculation affect the rows here all what you need to do is select the last figure you have here or just go up anywhere then point on the small square right here to get this dark cross click on it and drag down to whichever row you want to end it for instance i want to end it here and then the balances will run through awesome so if you are a seller earner you can just create something like this for yourself then every single month you receive your salary you just go ahead and enter the total salary under income then each time you incur an expenditure, you enter them under expenses. And finally, you know the amount of money you have left in your coffers. So that's it on how you can create an income and expenditure account for yourself or your business. I hope you found a ton of value in this tutorial. If it has helped you, please give it a like. It will help us as well. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are new here. In the meantime, do stick around to watch our next video YouTube think you should watch next. Keep watching and we'll see you on the next one.